Bad knees can be really devastating to your physical health, especially when you're trying to stay healthy, but you've lost an activity that at one time may have been something you really loved, and that in turn can also lead to some mental setbacks. The good news is, there's hope. The rower as a tool has helped a lot of people get back to movement. So although you may have lost something, it can become a new outlet for cardio capacity, your lungs ability to breathe, your heart capacity, your heart's ability to beat, your leg strength, and you don't have to worry about your knees. And in fact, you can actually get back to leg movement despite having bad knees or a bad knee. If this is your first time here, I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse Rowing, and we build better humans through rowing so that you can build the life that you want to live. One of the things that first comes up in discussion when it comes to rowing as it relates to knees is that it's a low impact exercise. Is that true? Answer is yes, absolutely it's a low impact exercise, but why? Well, the impact that's generally referred to is the impact of gravity, meaning the downward force of gravity on your body. As I stand here, that force is being put into all of my joints that are responsible for holding me in place. My spine, my hips, my knees, my ankles, all those really important junctions of the body. So when you sit down on the machine, you become this horizontal element and essentially your lower extremities, i.e. your legs, don't have to do as much work just to support you in place, as well as you get to use your legs without the constant pounding impact and downward force onto that joint. In fact, one of my clients, one of my favorite clients of all time, we were actually able to get him using his legs in, a, in a, an aerobic capacity for the first time in maybe 20 years because we were able to take him into that horizontal position, whereas he had never been able to use his legs before. He was born with some, some leg issues and essentially every doctor had written him off and said, you're never going to be able to use your legs appropriately. Well, that's a, that's a load. And by getting him onto the rower, we found a new way to develop leg strength as well as heart and lung capacity so that he could move again and found this miraculous new machine that allowed him to be happy and create movement. Next, as I mentioned, is the machine's ability to improve your lung capacity, your ability to breathe, and your heart capacity, the ability for your heart to act as a muscle and to pump blood through the body, as opposed to more passive machines like an elliptical or a bike, which people do tend to go to when their knees start to deteriorate and they're looking or searching for an activity. The reason that it helps to improve those things over more passive, and I call them passive machines because they guide you through the movement. An elliptical and a bike, they both guide you through the movement and you can just kind of lazily sit there at, to do the activity. Rowing is an active movement. You have to be fully engaged in the movement in order to pull it off. And the reason that it works better than those is because it has a higher full body demand to create the movement. You can't just passively do it. You have to place yourself in every position of the stroke. While yes, that creates a higher demand of knowledge and skill, it also has a greater impact, a greater physical impact on your body. In fact, in a 2008 study, it was found that rowers' hearts are actually larger in both cavity size, wall thickness, meaning like the thickness of the muscle tissue, as well as just the ability for the muscle to work. Essentially, rowing grows your heart into a better muscle. And then there's this really cool ability, and this has almost just become a hack of the machine, of the ability to use the rowing machine if you've had a, a previous knee surgery, or if you're dealing with some kind of acute single leg issue, perhaps you've had an amputation, perhaps you've had an ACL replacement, or you have a broken ankle. I know we're talking about knees in this video, but you get what I'm saying. The machine is able to be used single leg. You can take your one good leg, strap it in. You can take the other leg if it's in a fixed position and you can actually place it on a, a movable object and then row with that single leg, allowing you to still create leg strength and the ability to work your entire body while simply eliminating the one leg that can't be used. The way in which you do this is you can actually take either, you can take a skateboard, furniture slider, you know, you pick up at like Home Depot, they're really cheap little plastic things with a little foam on the and they slide really well. So a furniture slider, a skateboard, I've even, even seen people use a second rower and they put their leg on the seat because the seat slides back and forth. Get creative, whatever you can come up with. But we have this image that we use a lot on our website and in our programs of, of me giving a seminar and the, the girl that's first in the photo actually has her leg fixed on a skateboard because she came to the seminar and I, I believe she just had knee surgery and she did the entire seminar with one leg on a skateboard 
totally fantastic for her. And she actually ended up using that machine quite a bit through her rehab process because it allowed her to maintain aerobic capacity, use her one good leg. And then as she was continuing to improve, she began to use that leg a little bit more and a little bit more on the machine because it created some passive movement of the knee and some gentle movement on the knee as she was allowed to regain movement. And if you're used to dealing with bad knees, there's probably this unfortunate experience you've had to go through where you almost are forced to end up on the bike. For example, that's often like the machine people gravitate to most. However, the problem with a bike is that it creates a lot of quad dominance in the movement and quad being the large muscle on the front of your upper leg. Quad, because there are four muscles. Those, those four muscles, when used predominantly, can get really tight and they can actually start pulling on either of their insertion points, which would be the knee or the hip. Now, when that starts to happen, it can cause pain in that joint. So while you may have had bad knees, then you start cycling a lot because you, know, you can't run anymore, or you can't do your activity anymore. And then you start using the bike and then your quads get tight because you're using the quads so much, then it starts to pull on the knee, creating even more pain. So with the rower, we get a more balanced approach to the strength of the leg because the demands of the push when you actually go to take a stroke end up using the back side of your leg, the hamstrings, the glutes, the back. It involves the entire system that the leg likes to move instead of just being able to sit on a seat and just constantly use your quad to drive your leg down, in this instance, you end up using the whole leg function, which creates a much better balance to the strength in your leg, which creates a better longevity spectrum for knee pain because you start to strengthen systems that may have gotten weak and that can actually help to alleviate the strain on the knee over time, potentially giving you a better path to less knee pain. And finally, there's actually a question in our comments that asked, if I have bad knees, should I be lifting my heels or keeping them down as we often teach on this channel? I wanna begin by saying the reason we teach heels down is for beginners. And it's because when the heel lifts in the stroke, it creates a whole host of downstream problems that, that come out in the body as the stroke goes on. That is why we teach heels down because it automatically fixes a lot of those problems really quickly. So I just wanna say that's why we teach heels down. It's not that heels down is an always and forever. In fact, we just had another question in the comments saying, I see you teach heels down and yet in your workouts, you're lifting your heels. Well, yes, because that heels down is a beginner cue that we use and as you improve, let's allow that heel to lift. Now back to the question of if I have bad knees, should I keep my heels down or should I allow, allow them to lift? Allow them to lift once you've developed good movement habits. The other piece being if your heels are down and it's creating pain, absolutely we should be avoiding it. My suggestion is to shorten your stroke so that you don't create as much compression in the knee, that it doesn't fold as much. And we call that half slide. You take a shorter stroke, and you still keep the heels down so that you can learn how to access all of the muscles in your leg and push with the whole foot. That's the intent of having the heel down. So to come back to the answer, if you're keeping your heels down and it's causing knee pain, absolutely allow the heel to lift. The other piece of that is if your heels are down and it's causing knee pain, assess. Are you getting your seat too close to your heels and perhaps that extreme flexion of the knee is what's causing the pain? In which case, shorten the stroke a little bit so that the seat stays further behind the these are my heels, this is my seat, get what I'm saying? So that they don't get too close together because sometimes too much of that flexion can cause that pain. So shorten the stroke a little bit and see how that works. But the ultimate answer is do what feels best for you. Understand that the cue we give heels down is to help you learn better mechanics. And as you improve, you can allow the heel to lift. To keep learning and figuring out if rowing is really the right thing for you, check out this video. Is rowing really that great for you? And of course, don't forget to subscribe, become a member of the PDP Army, join the Dark Horse community, hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get alerted when we come out with a new video.